Hi, I'm Michael Rivnack from the Automation Broker team. Recently in a video, we looked at how to take a Helm chart and turn it into a service bundle using a new tool called Helm to Bundle. Today we're going to take another look at that workflow, but we're going to go a couple of steps further. We're going to use Ansible Automation to enhance and extend that Helm bundle. First, let's do a quick review of what that Helm bundle looks like. So in front of us, we have the results of running Helm to Bundle. Here I ran two commands, Helm Fetch and then Helm to Bundle. And that gave us what we see in this directory. And after that, I ran a third command, which was APB Push. That took care of building and then pushing my image into OpenShift. Let's remind ourselves what that looks like to deploy. So scrolling down here, we find our Redis 0. And this is how we interact with the Helm chart, not only in this context, but with Helm charts in general. If you need to configure anything for your particular provision, you interact with this YAML file. And here we could change values. We could change the value uh, that defines what container image we're going to run, that sort of thing. In our case, there is one value we must change, that is this one here, to false, because we're running on OpenShift. Uh, this will not deploy unless we set this to false. And we click through Create and Close and go to our overview, and we see that we get Redis deployed rather quickly here. Now, that's, that's a pretty elegant demo, but we can do better than this. In the meantime, let's go ahead and let this delete and move on and take a look at our next bundle. So here we have an extra file that's arrived, but before we look at that, uh, we're gonna look at the Docker file. And in this demo, we are using the power of an Ansible template to override some of those values that we just saw in that YAML file. So let's look, let's do a vim diff. So we've only changed a couple of things about this Docker file. We're using this new base image called Helm Ansible Base. On line 80 on the right, you can see that we're adding a new file called overridesyaml.j2. It's a template, of course. And then we've gone back to using the original entry point that the APB base image provides. That's the entry point that calls Ansible in the correct way for the broker's environment and workflow. So very, very minimal changes here. Now let's take a quick peek at overrides at this template. And this may look familiar. So this is an Ansible template. And here's that setting that we just had to change manually. We have to change it every time. So here I've automated that. So on line three, we're detecting by use of this, this Ansible fact cluster, whether or not we're running on an OpenShift cluster. And if so, we uh, set this new fact to false. Otherwise, it gets set to true. And then when this template gets rendered at provision time, it has the correct value. And we call Helm in such a way that this overrides file effectively gets layered on top of that previous YAML you just saw. So anything that we set here would override the values that were there. For the sake of time, we're not going to go through a demo of this one. You can just trust me on it. But we're going to move on to number two, which again is pretty similar. Uh, in this case, what I want to showcase is that we're adding rich parameters. So let's take a look at apb.yaml. Again, uh, let's use a vim diff. So aside from changing the number here, which is just a convenience for demo purposes, lines 17 to 21 over here on the right side you see in red, all I've done is add a single parameter. And of course, we could add as many parameters as we like. But in this case, I've called it image, gave it a title and a type and a default value. This is that value that I pointed out to you just a couple minutes ago inside that big, uh, big string full of YAML where we can specify what container image we want to deploy. So I've given this a default value, and there's only one other change I've made from what we looked at a moment ago, 
and that is an override. We have a new line at the bottom here where we are specifying the image and it's templatized so that whatever the value is of that fact gets injected here at provision time. This, I really just want to emphasize, is um, quite a powerful workflow. The end user sitting in front of the OpenShift web console has an opportunity to input the name of an image and that gets passed all the way through the workflow, through the service catalog, through the broker, uh, into this running APB rendered with Ansible in this template and then passed into Helm and Helm renders its charts and then finally gets passed into KubeCuddle to create resources. Uh, it's, it's a lot going on, but the experience is very simple. As you saw, all we had to do is change apb.yaml, define the parameter, and then use that parameter here in this template. So let's, let's get a quick look at this. We have Redis 2, and you see we have this new image uh, field here we can specify. So I happen to know that there's a 409 version. So we're just going to select that and click through and give this just a moment. It spins up pretty quick. And we can see here already that it is using the image that, that I just specified. So there you have it. That's a very simple way that you can add rich parameters to a Helm bundle. Now lastly, we're going to look at where the real power is, I think. Uh, and we're going to look at a demo that uses WordPress. Uh, this is the stable WordPress Helm chart we're going to look at. And now we're going to really bring in Ansible automation to perform actions before and after Helm itself runs. And this is useful in our case. Uh, we're going to do a couple of things that we'll see here as we dig into the files. Uh, so first, let's check out the Docker file. Now this is going to look fairly familiar, but we've added a couple of things that you would see in an APB. In particular here, after we added that overrides file, we're adding playbooks and we're adding roles. This is very similar to what you would see if you ran APB init. Every APB pretty much that you see includes uh, its own playbooks and roles. So that's really the only change we've made there. And then let's take a look at the overrides file. Now starting on line four here, uh, these are just some normal parameters that I've defined uh, in apb.yaml so we can now richly provide the, this input as a user. But the more interesting part here starts on line 16. We are going to use an external database that we are going to provision separately from WordPress. We're going to provision a database, create a binding, and then this APB that's based on Helm and this Helm chart is going to discover that binding and use it. So let's take a look uh, at our provision playbook to really show you what's going on here. So here we see this Helm Ansible base role. This is the role that we just saw a moment ago in the last demo. It's provided by the base image, and it is the role that actually calls Helm itself and causes that manifest to actually be created inside the cluster. We've additionally here added a pre-provision role and a post-provision role, and you can guess what kinds of activities they do. In pre-provision, as promised, we are discovering a secret. Now this is uh, an interesting pattern, I think. Uh, we don't have a great elegant story yet in the service catalog ecosystem for how does one provision operation discover in a reasonable way uh, or, or somehow get tied together with a binding from some other service that was provisioned independently or separately. So here what I'm doing is we're going to just use a label. We're going to add a label to the binding secret. This is going to discover the secret. And we've got air handling to ignore that. And down here, we are parsing the value of that secret and using those values to set facts. And then those, are, those facts are going to be used uh, in the next step when uh, we render that overrides template and that gets passed in Helm. So how cool is that? 
Let's then check check out post provision. And again, as advertised, uh, this will create an OpenShift route only when we are running on a cluster that we know is OpenShift. Uh, and of course, an OpenShift route is a very handy thing to have, as we're going to see. Okay, I think we're ready for demo time. This is the last demo. We are going to fire up MariaDB. That Helm chart in particular calls for MariaDB, and in most circumstances, it provides its own MariaDB that it provisions with it. Um, for a couple of reasons, one of which is that it uh, has permission problems on OpenShift, but another that uh, that wouldn't make nearly as fun of a demo, we're going to provide our own database here. So we just created a binding, and we've got the secret. Uh, we're going to edit the secret, because like I told you, we're going to add a label. And that is what will tie together these two services. All right, we're ready to deploy WordPress. So we'll find, I already pre-built all of these, of course, before I started recording. So we've got this WordPress Helm bundle. We'll click through, and here you see those, those parameters that I, I already defined that we saw in apb.yaml uh, and in the overrides file. So let's add some values here. So we have our first role is uh, discovering that secret, reading and parsing that secret, and using its value to set facts. Then the base Helm Ansible base role is using that to render the overrides template and stuff that into Helm uh, so that Helm uses those values when it creates its manifest. Then uh, we are creating an OpenShift route, which we probably can already see that's been created. Yep, our route did get created. And otherwise, it does just take this, uh, this image a moment to get up and running and finish all of its startup duties. But uh, while that's going, um, this is, I think, a very powerful aspect and opportunity that comes along with turning a Helm chart into uh, a service bundle in this way. You have the full power of Ansible at your disposal to, to do whatever you, you think is necessary to get your service provisioned. Okay, we are up and running and ready to go. Let's see what we find. All right, this looks like a WordPress blog. We can even attempt to log in. I'm not going to save that password. And here we are. We have a, uh, a fully working WordPress. We can publish a blog post and everything. There it is. So thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Please let me know if you have some feedback. Go ahead and put that in the comments, or otherwise you know how to get in touch with the project. We'd love to hear from you. Um, this is, I think, a very interesting uh, way, and there's a lot of opportunity here for taking something like a Helm chart and using the service bundle concept and Ansible automation to enhance and extend it. Thanks for watching.